Well, I'm having a problem with these uh, first few bins. Well, first, I guess first couple ones. You can see here I have a spoon and I've been digging out the top of it, tossing it in a bucket. I already did the same for the one up here that had uh, six bags in it. But you see I've cased it now after I've dug it out with uh, vermiculite only because I've decided that <coughs> this uh, peat moss that I'm using isn't very good peat moss. I bought it at Home Depot, Home Depot for a discount, um, but I know it has a lot of sticks and stuff in it, a lot more than I would get in uh, uh, higher priced, higher quality peat moss. And so, you know, you get what you pay for. But what it is, is that this really isn't peat totally. It has too much organic matter that isn't fully composted. So instead of the mushrooms trying to use it as a casing layer, rather they are trying to eat it for food, which causes a problem because uh, it never can quite eat at all because the top of it's not wet enough and the humidity is not high enough. So it kind of uh, throws the fruiting schedule way off and then the mycelium dies back and I start getting spots of mold all over the one on the top. Um, spots of mold on the first one that I made bare. Although it's starting to uh, fully pin in some spots. There's just too many spots of mold, so I decided I'm just going to take the top off and try to reset it. Hopefully, scratching the surface will simulate maybe like a wild deer munching at the top of the uh, mycelium, eating it. That will give it a, a reset. And I'm going to recase it with some vermiculite. I'm using uh, same water content. I would for the 50-50 the mix. Um, and then I just use the same four uh, medium handfuls, sprinkle it on top, try to make sure there's a few bare spots spotted around here and there. You can see that I've already made a few bins with it. Earlier today, not quite long enough to start it's just starting to grow back now. Now since I've discovered that this casing mix has too much nutrition in it and the mushroom wants to colonize it, I decided that uh, these ones that I've already made and haven't taken the lid off, I'm going to let colonize the top fully. You can see it's already loaded. I'm going to let it fully colonize, kind of like what I used to do, but this time I'm not going to let a pin inside the tub. When it's fully colonized, I'm going to take a lid off and let it pin down here with the lid off. You see, it's almost done, so. And some of these, though, aren't having problems. This one that I cased is uh, made a lot of growth on the sides and ate up a lot of the casing. It's kind of growing on top of it, but. It looks like it's pinning in spots and I can't find any mold. I think one of the problems too that I had with this one, I screwed up and uh, forgot to miss it one evening. I don't even know what I was doing. I must have got sidetracked. I thought I came down here and already did it. And so the, the center of this kind of got dry. You can actually see a, a dry spot here where it's kind of dark yellow and rough looking. So, uh, yeah, I kind of made it hard panned and when you get to that kind of point, that's what you would call overlay, where it's just a uh, tough mycelium over top of itself, hard panned down. It can't fruit off of it. Um, the only thing to do is remove it. So that's what I'm going to do is just remove the whole thing and start over. These two, I'll let them be. I've been good at missing them and hopefully no mold will catch the uh, grain that's exposed. I think this one actually is pinning pretty good. 
Yeah, I see a lot of uh, good pins developing all throughout, so that's a good sign. But I do see some mold spots here. You get to know what uh, green mold mycelium looks like versus oyster mycelium pretty easily. But uh, it could be too, it's just that it got dried out too much. I think what I might do, though, is make another one uh, uncased, no vermiculite, but let it recolonize in the tub for uh, three or four days so that that grain gets ate up quite a bit. And then it'll be more like how it is when you originally take the top off the bag uh, of the sawdust block because it's sat there and colonized long enough that all the grain on the outside is pretty much ate up. It doesn't cause a problem. Um, also, too, something I did differently. This one, I broke up all four blocks totally and mixed it up. And so, not just the tops of the blocks, because so I, I figured maybe there could be a factor in uh, leaving most of the blocks together and just packing the, the fifth block and chunks around them. So I'll see if there's a difference. I'm thinking probably not. So give it time and we'll see some more results and uh, figure out which is the best direction to go. If I don't have to use a casing layer and get the same results, that would be the most ideal situation because it equals less work, more money. Well, I've had to throw out the first two bins. I tried saving them, but the uh, mold had just gotten too much in there. Plus two, when I flipped these bins up, upside down and dumped out the interior, there was mold growing where I didn't quite pack the busted up sawdust around the blocks well enough and there was an air cavity. And that's usually a bad problem when you have an air cavity underneath or inside like a, a straw log because it allows the air to get stale and allows for a different kind of environment where mold will flourish. But uh, so now I'm, everything I'm making, I'm busting up the blocks and kind of bouncing the tubs up and down to settle it all and make sure there's no gaps. That way not, I don't get that problem. I just kind of use my fists and break it up or you can just use your fingers and bust it up but it's actually kind of easier just to kind of like punch it, take out some aggression. But here's the oldest one so far and it hasn't molded up but it really hasn't done much of anything yet. I'm hoping that it's kind of just skip the first flush and get ready to go for a second try. Now all these ones that I've been making with vermiculite only are doing well. And you can see these ones that I let the casing mix colonize up mostly are pinning pretty well too. There's some pins there, one there. Still seems a lot of majority is it around the edges, but I guess that's okay. And you can see that I got quite a bit of liquid standing. It's flooded quite a bit, but it doesn't seem to be causing a problem. And I'm thinking that you actually want it flooded a little bit with this kind of setup because I can actually see pins forming in the water. And the water is an orangey color because it, the uh, mycelium is making metabolite, which is its own natural antibiotic or antibacterial uh, chemical. So it's coming along. So hopefully that'll start producing well. You can see this one. It's making pins pretty decent. Mostly around the edge. And then the one 
where I didn't use any casing layer and only let the uh, uh, top recolonize for like two days where you can still see green. You see it's going not a, all over, all over. And I have to mist it quite a bit. It's, it soaks up the water a lot. And you can see it's kind of pushed the, uh, the tub open. And created a space in between in between the uh, blocks and the wall. But that's a better situation because at least the mushrooms will know to go straight up. So that's where the light is. So I'll go ahead and miss that to where it's uh, decently flooded to. This one up here, I let recolonize with no casing for four days. You can see there's no grain exposed. And I got, again, quite a bit of uh, liquid flooded it. I haven't even misted it yet. If it's really flooded like that, I'll get a little bit lighter misting, just making sure that the sides of the tub are covered in droplets of water. But like I said, it really doesn't look like it's hurting it. And I've had some more problems with this uh, uh, peat moss that I don't think is actually peat moss. I've actually had to throw a few blocks out that didn't even make a good first flush and had mold growing in the moss. And also I can tell the peat moss has too much nutrition because here's some ascocarp species of mushroom you can see. Looks like a little ear. I can get it. Yeah, it's definitely some sort of ascocarp a cup shape. Maybe Peziza species. I know those look like that but get a little bit larger outside. But it's not interfering with this. As you can see it's fruiting all around it. It's just growing off the sticks and other debris in this cheap peat moss. So I'm happy just to do away with it really. Alright, so let's take a look when these two bins that are coming off with pins are ready to get some mushroom cut off. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to chop off a few large ones and have more pins follow quickly behind it, popping up right in the center and spaces where they're not. 